today I am joined by the famous Max O'Hare in another edition of Life with Life with Sports. So Max, how you didn't how you, how you been doing? Doing pretty well, you know, just hanging in there during quarantine. Yeah. Um, you know, homework and the usual. Yeah, tough time. So tell us a little bit. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, all right. So I'm a junior. I go to Providence College. Um, I've always been a baseball, basketball player. Me and CP, we've known each other since freshman year. We've been great friends. A lot of sports talk, a lot of good memories. So happy to be here. Yeah. I mean, PC should have made the tournament this year. I mean, that's too bad. I know. We we had a nice little run going. We beat all the, uh, you know, the top Big East teams. But, you know, COVID had uh, plans otherwise. So, yeah. Yeah, it did. Uh, I I remember the first time I ever met you. I don't think you I don't know if you remember this, but it was a senior year of Scots class. Oh yeah, Spanish. I remember and that. You were like, you haven't even hit, you didn't even hit puberty yet. Like you still nah. had the wicked high voice. You like, <laughs> you were scrawny as hell. And yeah, I was I was tiny. It was unbelievable. I couldn't believe that a, a kid in freshman year had that high of a voice. I know, I know. It brings me back to the old days. So let's go. So let's start off with your athletic career at Sturgis, and we're sure. starting the basketball department. Freshman year, you're on the JV team, mm-hmm. and then sophomore year, you actually got the starting point guard job on the varsity team. What did it feel like getting handed the keys to the castle that young? Um, I mean, it's definitely a challenge at first. It was pretty nerve wracking. I mean, I was playing with guys, you know, like Mike Mondello, John Russell like bigger guys you know and I was still like very small at the time so it was definitely a tough adjustment but honestly I think I just learned a lot playing alongside those guys and honestly just working my role as like a pure point guard yeah that was a I would consider that like a rebuilding year that's yeah. our sophomore year then when when we got to our junior year I think that was when the the basketball program really became elite and in my yeah. opinion I don't know if you agree with me, but a lot of kids from other schools consider Sturgis best one of the best basketball programs on the Cape. Yeah, for sure. We had a good squad junior year. In junior year, we had a core of you, Peter Vonderheide, John Ryan, Sean Glenn, Nick Pepe, Dwight, Curtis, and Connor. That's a very good seven or eight. Oh, yeah, for sure. What do you remember about junior year? Um, honestly, I mean, I know we had a great season that year. I mean, I know we made the playoffs and lost to Nantucket, I believe, first round. Yes, we did. But, I mean, honestly, I thought that was our best year, like, in my four years playing there. Just, like, we're honestly, just, like, being in that rotation, working with uh, Johnny Ryan and Sean, those just, like, two great players to have in your lineup and just, like, to be alongside with. And also, you just had, like, a young Curtis and Dwight off the bench. They're just huge. And I think that's that was a year that like we all started growing, you know, we're like maturing. So the one thing we we failed to do during our junior year was beat Sturgis East. That is true. And, and that, as you know, that ooh. that that is that is always a very unique game. What do oh, you yeah. remember about East versus West games? Um I mean, the atmosphere just unreal. You know, those are those are always fun fun battles with those guys. And they, I mean, they had a good team. Don't get me wrong, but like, I I seriously think we should have won both of those, especially junior year. You know. Oh yeah, definitely. I think um, the thing about those games is I don't care what record either team is. You yeah. Throwing them out the window. It's one of the most unique rivalries you ever seen with Sturgis Charter School having one campus with with two locations, east and west. Yeah. And I just think it was incredible. They're all, they're, those games are always close, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, pressure is on. Like, it doesn't matter how good one team is, how bad one team is, you know. It's going to be a battle regardless. A low-scoring game for sure. Yeah, and then we, like you said, we then we ended up making the tournament and then um, losing at home to Nantucket, which was – that was an interesting game because we went on, a, like, a – like a huge run to begin that game. The crowd was going nuts, and then Nantucket just was able to clamp clamp their defense down, and we just couldn't score. Yeah, I think just I mean 
Nantucket, also, they always had a good program over there. And they knew how to run the floor for sure. So I think in that game, they just ran us out and played smarter. Which I don't know if you remember this, but if we beat Nantucket, do you remember who you would have faced on Saturday? Was it a uh, Cathedral? Cathedral Boston? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it wouldn't really have mattered if we won, honestly, but. No, I mean, we would have had to gone up there, and they would have probably been, like, alley-ooping on us and stuff. Yeah, like we, we would have lost by 100, but, like, I mean, just to win a tournament game is something, for sure. Yeah. And then, going into our senior year, you subtracted Johnny Ryan and Sean Glenn, and you added a Justin Howard, which he was on the team sophomore year, but didn't play much. He was still very raw. And um, Brendan Glenn. What do you, right. What do you think about senior year? I, I personally thought – we could have had a better season senior year. Yeah, I mean, senior year, there's a lot of pressure on us, you know, just like having to having be captains, just like having to get all the guys together. And I think just like we, had, we had definitely had some holes in that team. I mean, missing uh, Johnny Ryan shooting that year was huge. And Sean, Sean just is like a ball distributor. Like he could do it all. You know, those are two key losses. Um, And also like I, I just didn't play well at all. That was like a, that was a bad year for me for sure. You know, I wasn't playing my full potential. Um, yeah, we, I mean, that was just like a team. Like, we had a lot of potential. We could have made a deep run in the playoffs. We just didn't show it. Yeah, we lost uh, um, Old Colony that year. We had to go up to Old Colony, which we never played well in that gym. Oh, no. That, that's a tough place to play. They have a good crowd. That place gets, that place gets pretty wild. Yeah, for sure. And um, I, what I remember about that season is um, we had a stretch there in December where we played uh, – Pope John Paul, and we went, we, we went down by, like, 23 at the half. And mm-hmm. Coach Erha almost lost it. What's that? Coach Erha almost lost it because you guys um, didn't run the correct game plan whatsoever. And then I remember, I think you were the one that said, like, let's just change it all up, and we almost came back and won that game. Yeah, I mean, that, well, that's another good point you bring up. I just, like – Love Coach Kyle. He's a great guy. I just honestly didn't really agree with his offense. And I just didn't think it worked. Like, I, I just remember in those games against uh, Pope John Paul, you know, like they're a fast paced team. They'd, they'd always run the fast breaks, swing it fast. So I feel like just moving the ball freely just helped us in that second half. Yeah. And then we carried the momentum from the second half of the Pope John game and then brought it over to the East game. And I think one of the adjustments we made going into the East game was we kind of ran a whole new offense of running the floor and stuff, and we ended up beating East that game. I remember the crowd was going nuts yeah, as usual, and that was a, that was a huge win to go into the break. Yeah. And I mean, that's just the thing about that team. Like, like individually as players, like, we're all, like, we're very skilled, you know? We had a lot of stuff in our bag, but, like, you know, like, some people just don't – aren't just fluent in, like, the same offense, you know? I don't so know you if you change also, it up. I don't know if you also remember that um, senior year, but remember when um, – we had to go into the to the hotel. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in December. Yeah, because there was a flying at our like actual school. Yeah, that was funny. That was weird. Like all the that. classes were in like one big ballroom. You could like it was so loud in there, you couldn't even understand what the teacher was saying. Yeah, you like I remember I had like Spanish class like down the hallway and like I would like pass like the pool and the gym to get to my class and it was just like what? It's so weird, you know. It's good times. Yeah, good times. And then um, your baseball career. You wouldn't you agree you're a better baseball player than a than a basketball player? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. For sure. So freshman year, you you started off in JV, but after a couple of games, you're too good for that and went up to varsity. Yeah. And um, then you um, you're in you're an outfielder, but then you're also a pretty good pitcher. But then um, it was weird. Then you had a shoulder injury that really cost you. Yeah, I mean, uh, pitching was always, like, my strong suit. Um, like, yeah, fre- once freshman year of baseball started, I started having, like, just, like, injuries and, like, a lot of tightness in my shoulder. So I wasn't really throwing as hard. I wasn't throwing the velocity I could. And then, I mean, like, I, I pitched here and there, but, like, I just started focusing on, on my bat more and just running the outfield, I guess. <laughs> Would you say that you maybe have – you threw too much as a as a little kid and stuff that really – that really just screwed up your arm or you made – I'd have food, thrown too many curveballs at a young um, Yeah, it's a little both. I mean, I think 
just like being young, my mechanics probably weren't were a little off. You know, I was just, I mean, being like a small kid, like I was just throwing as hard as I could. And like, I mean, I could I could pump it for sure, but like, you know, just sometimes you overthrow and overdo it. Um, and yeah, I I threw way too many curve balls. Like, I already know that. <laughs> so. Yeah, and then so then after your freshman year of baseball, then in the sophomore year they got um, Mr. and I brought in a new coach because your freshman coach. Coach Benham has left, and he brought in uh, Russell. What did you think of um, the transition to Russell? I thought it was a great transition. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't really remember freshman year too much, but I mean, that guy, he, what was his name, or Benowitz? Yeah. I mean, he was just a teacher, so you know, like he was a great guy, but like he didn't, he didn't have the baseball IQ, in my opinion. But I mean, Coach Ross, like, like I, I had a great three years playing uh, with him. You know, he just had a great passion for baseball, and. Uh, I always seem to get the guys going. Yeah, and then your sophomore year, um, you had a really good core of guys there too, with um with you, Jonathan Avis, JP Labarge, Nick Pepe, John Ryan, Steve Horn, Chris Parkin, Trevor McDonald, and uh, Jonathan Gloutier. Yeah, we also had uh, West West that year. He was a good pitcher. Yeah. I think that year is our best rotation for sure. Yeah, and what can you tell me about sharing an outfield with JP and Avis? Oh, we had a great squad out there, dude. I mean, those guys have absolute cannons. And like, I mean, I, I've never had like the strongest arm in the outfield. Like, I, I was definitely the fastest one out there. You know, just being able to like play alongside those guys. Good time. Yeah, and you also were, you were also a pretty good. Um, you're also a pretty good – I thought you should have been a speed guy, but you decided to go more towards the power end of, of hitting. <laughs> um, what made you want to go to the power end of the hitting instead of focusing on just being a, a contact and speed guy? Um, I mean, sophomore year, like, I was still kind of scrawny, but I was starting to hit the weights. So, you know, I mean, like, I've always just brought, like, aggr- like aggressiveness and energy to the plate. That's just how I swing. So, I'd say, like, after sophomore year, like, I definitely – was in the power position because I remember junior year I, I got moved up to the three spot and I was like one of the shorter guys on the team so I was just how I played I guess. <laughs> I don't know why you I still you know my opinion on that I never agreed with you transitioning to a power hitter. Yeah I mean well it worked out eventually. It and you were on that team that made the tournament the first Yeah that, that was fun yeah. that was a good time. Yeah that was you had a you had a really good baseball career, and what Thank was um, what was cool about the the baseball games against Sturgis East was you actually played at Lowell Park. Oh yeah, here at Catalyst. Yeah, I, I remember. Um, I think it was my sophomore year. That was when like we started playing there. Like I remember that first East West game. Like as a sophomore playing center, and I was like, "This is sick. This is what you live for." And to go back to your freshman year, right? Um, you actually faced a very good pitcher in Luke Chevalier, who ended up pitching in the Cape Cod Baseball League. What is it? What was it like yeah. facing an arm like his? Actually, he he was my first varsity at bat. Believe it or not. Wow. We, yeah, I remember. I remember. I, uh, oh, I was so nervous. I was like 14. I I think I like came in to pinch hit for someone. And, like, I got, like, a fielder's choice off him or something. Like, just, welcome like, an to, end of the bat. Welcome to Varsity, little guy. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, like, that kid threw absolute gas. He's probably pumping, like, 85. And like, just seeing that for your first hit bat, like, holy shit, like, I got to get better. <laughs> yeah, and then um, I was like, now I'm going to transition to more off the field um, stuff that we've done together. Me and you have done a countless stuff off the field. Pe- off the field from going to a lot of games, from you and Peter Vondard coming over to the house and having a good time. Oh, yeah. So I remember the first couple of games that we've been together, we were at Celtics games. Mm-hmm. And, the, and it was kind of in Dorothy Dor- building years, but what was interesting about going to those Celtics games is we, you and I have never seen the, the Celtics win. Yeah, I know. I mean, when we went to those games, like, they never had a good squad. I mean, they had, like, Avery Bradley, like Sullinger and those guys. Jordan like, Crawford. Yeah, like I mean, it was it was still a great time, but like you know, they weren't that great. And then um, we also went to 
the a 2014 Red Sox game against Baltimore and uh, Felix Dubon pitched. And that's right. Big Poppy hit a home run. Mm-hmm. It, that oh. was a, that was a little bit of a revenge for you because you were saying next to my brother, and yeah. you know John, he's not the biggest Big Poppy fan. Yeah, I mean he was he was cheering me all game for it, and I was like, this guy's the goat, like he's gonna hit a home run, and then look what happens. And the, my my favorite memory was Pats versus Broncos in in twenty fourteen. Yeah, and it was. Yeah. The, in fact, it was the last ever Manning versus Brady game in Foxborough. What was it like going to that game and experience? I mean, that was actually my first Patriots game like I've ever been to, and like I, I that was just nuts. Like the atmosphere there was it was crazy. It was cold as hell. <laughs> yeah, but like there's so many iconic plays in that game. Like you just remember it like it's that. The Julian Edelman uh, punt return was nuts. Yeah, the, the punt return, the, that the Gronk catch. You remember that? Yeah. The Gronk catch, the the, man, the Manning Ducks. Yeah, yeah. He probably threw for like 90 yards. <laughs> yeah, like you don't you didn't realize until you're live, you're like, oh my god, like Manning's arm was like done. And that was the year before it really went on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, that was when the Patriots had Revis and Browner. That was a good team. That was when we uh, beat Seattle, right? Yeah, that's the year. Yeah. I forgot we, oh, we, we yeah. saw that game together. That's right. Yeah, I, I remember that. It was you and Connor Cameron came over to the house. Yeah. And after the Seahawks went up by 10, you and John decided to go upstairs and play Xbox. And yeah. Me and Connor Cameron stayed downstairs and and kept the faith. I was doubtful, dude. But, I mean, never doubt Brady. I will always remember when um the Butler interception happened. Oh, my God. I, like me and Connor came, me and Connor were the first ones to realize it, and we and we screamed yeah at the same time, and you didn't yeah. even realize what happened. I like tackled you into the chair. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy, dude. Like it was just like, like you can't script that. You can't make that up. Remember Seattle when they scored before that happened, and then my dad got up and he like <gasps> slammed the door. Yeah, I do remember that. That was funny. Good times. Good. A lot of good times, and then um, and then the boss, then you came over with Nick Pepe for the Baltimore game. Oh yeah, dude, that dude, that was just like a, that was a great year, a bunch of good games. The, the Edelman double pass. Yeah, right. That was a close game too, as far as I remember. Yeah, the Patriots ended up winning by four. They they went down by two touchdowns twice during that game. Yeah, dude, they, they just kept coming back in all those games. Yeah, and so. then. And then the thirteen Reds, and then we we went we led through the thirteen Red Sox together. Oh yeah, dude. I, I don't know. know if, I don't know if you remember this, but I was the I was not a John Lester fan. Really? Yeah, I mean, I I would go in and, and tell Mister Andre our Latin teacher that he was a, he was an overrated starting pitcher. <laughs> they had a good rotation that year. I mean, that was like that was peak Lester, Buckholtz, PV, all those guys. John Lackey pitched the clincher. Lackey, yeah, dude. Like, but they're nice. They're a good team. So what is it like being at college and stuff? I know you work for the Provin- some Providence basketball games. What is yeah. It like, what is it like doing that? Um, I mean, it's a good experience. It's, I mean, it's definitely fun when you're, you're playing, like, big, like, big-time games against Marquette, Villanova all those teams, you know, it's definitely, it's a crazy atmosphere. Um, I mean, just like being alongside those guys, you know, like just watching it from there is just, it's crazy. It's a good time. Yeah. I get, I get jealous a little bit um, <laughs> that you get to experience. I mean, I, I obviously with my role with the cell basketball, I never get to watch a game as a, as a fan. So. Right. Yeah. You gotta keep yeah, your composure. So- yeah, I, do, like, I know you have trouble doing that. So, <laughs> no, actually, I've gotten much better at that. Really? Like, if you if you go back and watch some of the sub basketball highlights, I never like show much emotion at all. That's good. I to hear it. See, because I have to like I have to hold the board, and I can't like jump up and down if it's like a last second shot because I have to like quickly like get the board to Coach Galetta if he needs it. Right. So you always have to like, you know, stay in the moment as best you mm-hmm. can. 
Das mache ich. 